how, how did I become such an odd duck in this uh, comfortable uh, world? You know, they got that old saying, uh, you can uh, um, comfort the uh, afflicted or you can afflict the comfortable. And kind of what I do is afflict the comfortable. And I'm the lead man. I'm out there and bringing it home. And if it's a trick to avoid lines at the museum in Paris or find a cheap place to stay in London or stay healthy in Turkey or break down your ethnocentrism and realize that, hey, we're outnumbered on this planet 20 to 1, something's weird. When I was, when I was a kid, it was uh, uh, rich Americans going down to a big cruise ship in the Caribbean, throwing coins off the deck and photographing black kids jumping for the coins. I remember that. When I was a little kid, I thought that's what travel is. It's rich people going down there and really flaunting their wealth. And then when I got older, I decided, if I'm going to teach travel, am I just going to be encouraging this kind of action that really is a problem? And even today, for many Americans, travel is still see if you can travel to see if you can eat five meals a day and still snorkel when you get into port. You know, and that's just not my idea of good travel. That's not bad. That's hedonism, and there's nothing wrong with hedonism. I, if somebody works hard and they got that money and that's what they want to do, more power to them. But just don't call it travel. Travel to me brings people together. My whole thing is independent travelers, and you know, if you're an independent traveler, to me, it's a very spiritual experience. 25 years I've taken groups around and even in my secular tour company we'll have uh, Sunday morning fellowships I call them very inclusive it's kind of dicey when you sell a tour to have a, a what <laughs> we got to go to church <laughs> but on Sunday morning we have a fellowship and it's very inclusive and you know it's it's um, probably common sense to say God instead of Jesus a lot because I want all these people who are spiritual but not necessarily practicing Christians to get together and share how their travels are affecting their faith. And it's a beautiful and powerful part of your travels to acknowledge that you're a person of faith and as you go to these great churches and as you meet these little children in the markets and as you walk on the ridges in the Alps, you become very in touch with the uh, wonders of this planet and uh, how blessed we are and uh, how connected we are with our Creator. Back in Jerusalem. I have to get my foot in the door by promising people beautiful beaches and cheap hotels and great train passes and you know here's how to get the best plane ticket. Uh, but there's so much more to travel than just being fed and housed and catch the train. And that just provides you the practical foundation and then you want to meet people and you want to um, broaden your perspective and have truths that you were raised thinking are self-evident and God-given challenged. The thought that every year five precious languages go extinct is fascinating to me. It's heart-wrenching to me because I've been with these little groups that are losing that battle. And they don't go out with a bang, they go out with a whimper. It's a slow, discouraging, melting away and um, it's tough now because there's a big powerful culture on this planet and there's going to be Starbucks on every corner and I'm the first one to get my latte you know I'm part of this movement I'm uh, teaching people to get on the airplane and and uh, you know have their melatonin so they don't have their jet lag and go over there and not get diarrhea and, and get some cheap carpets and come home there's got to be more to it than that and you'll get your cheap carpets and you'll avoid diarrhea and you'll get some good snapshots but you also come home with um, uh, an appreciation of what it's like to be an American and a, and a thankfulness for how blessed we are in our security and in our freedom and in our affluence but also with a very keen awareness that there are real people with real struggles that do not have the American dream they don't wish they had two cars in the garage. They don't wish they had a college education for their kid. All they want is a thatch over their roof and enough ground to grow their rice and beans and some peace and justice so somebody's not going to muscle them off that land and force them onto a plantation where they only have imported food to buy. You know, Mother Teresa would say, if somebody wanted to come and see her work, they'd say, well, think carefully about this because you're going to spend two years' wages on the plane ticket to get down there and back. And she's saying, not saying don't do it, but if you're going to spend that money to get down there and back, you better take home something that makes it a good stewardship. And I struggled with that long and hard when I encourage people to travel and spend that money. When I go to the developing world, I know if I take a photograph, 
click. That's half a day's wages, just the cost to develop that piece of film. You know, it's very difficult and frustrating when you're a traveler who's been hugely impacted by some travel experience, whether it's a Christian mission to some uh, orphanage or uh, church work in Africa or Central America, or if you're just adventure traveling in South Asia or whatever. You come home, and it's like for me in India. India is my favorite country. I can't talk to people about India. They just, people don't get it. I don't even waste my breath talking about India. I certainly would never take a group to India. I can take a group to Ireland or Italy because I can, I can manufacture the travel fund and it's not a personal thing it's a universal thing anybody who goes to venice wow saint mark's square they go to saint peter's wow michelangelo's pieta they go to london ah beef eaters but if i take you to india and you stand in the ganges river and you watch these people doing their uh, rituals oh man it's I, I wouldn't have patience with soft first world travelers with creature comfort needs so i wouldn't be the tour guide that i need to be i can tell you that right now and when you're on a rickshaw going through town and getting to know these people, I could not sympathize with people who are bothered by things that are too wild and in your face. Uh, so for me, it's a very personal experience. You know, this is an interesting thing to me. American Christians care about other people. We've got good hearts. There's no doubt about it. We really care about poor people and this kind of thing. And it's a little overwhelming for the typical American to be confronted with all these children with bloated bellies in Biafra, you know, it's like, stop it, stop it. I just, let's just support the boys club and the girls club here. And our little league needs new uniforms. And, uh, okay, we can take a church group down to Tijuana and build a house. Isn't that great? And then come back. I get so frustrated when a church group goes down to Tijuana, builds a house and comes back and does not incorporate that compassion in an enlightened kind of citizenship. I want them to be active Christian citizens mobilized to make our country a positive force on this planet when it comes to peace and justice issues. Too, it's too convenient to go down to Tijuana, build a house, come back, and then vote for your own self-interest. I don't know why more people don't have an appetite for it, but it's not a way to fill your scrapbook with smiley faces and barbecues and birthday parties. Thomas Jefferson said travel makes a person wiser but less happy. And I think that's what travel has done to me. Uh, I like to think that. And less happy is not a bad thing. I want the truth. <laughs>
and we spend more on cosmetics and diet products than we do on third world aid. Radicalizing a person that's passionate about how they're going to live out their faith in their life is not a bad thing. That's a very constructive thing. How do you radicalize these people in a way that actually helps the gears connect and, and get something done? First of all, they've got to experience it firsthand. And organizations like the Lutheran Church that really see the value in taking legislators and movers and shakers and church leaders in their communities, teachers, down there to see this stuff, um, boy, that person comes home and assuming they, they want to be more effective in this mission, it has a long-term constructive positive impact on them. Since 9-12, I got together with my staff and I said, we need to continue traveling. The most terrible result of this would be if Americans stop traveling, close down, and build up bigger walls to separate us from the rest of the world. And we decided then and there that we were going to be giddy flagships of confidence in our society, helping us travel, break down these fears, broaden our perspectives, and then come home and help our country fit better into this ever smaller planet. Um, it's a very important mission and uh, I, as a Christian and as a teacher and as an enthusiast of traveling, that's my calling right now and that's why I work uh, in a way that a lot of people is, think is much too hard. <laughs>